people are like so stuck up with like their their way of thinking and their way of doing things. Yeah. I mean, you should embrace change. You should not fight it. It's it's coming, whether or not you like it. I mean, things are going to evolve. They're going to change. Yep. And even yourself, you're going to change. So yeah. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Are you a brew head? I'm a brew head. Y'all a brew heads? Yeah, we brew heads. So pour a glass of craft beer. We can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is Seek Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 122 of Beer and Understood Podcast. This afternoon's glorious, snowy day in Montreal. We are here at Experience Beer in uh, Montreal with Fabrice, owner of Le Pac de Grand. My man, Team Lactose. How you doing? Team the Lactose. Oh, it's going to be an interesting one. Uh, we've been mean to do this for a while. I got yeah. a bit sick over Christmas yeah. just beforehand, so I apologize. I bailed on you. No problem. But I was dying. It was pretty bad. That's the lactose. <laughs> I mean, potentially. Could have just all caught up with me. Um, yeah, so Experience Beer, uh, shouts to Olivier for letting us use the space today. Yeah. This place is really nice, man. Um, really cool store. We're on Amherst, sort of in, the, it's kind of, I guess, is the village area. Yeah, I guess um, so. Uh, I guess it is. It's probably what you call it. Um, I haven't, we used to live kind of near here a while ago. Um, but I never came to this place before. It's very cool. It's, uh, it's, it's only been open for uh, like two years, I guess. Okay, so, so that's possible. Yeah, that it's quite new. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I like it. And they've been supporters of you, like they've been stuck in your yeah, stuff? Yeah, first day, I, uh, when they uh, did the, uh, the opening, I was here with my beer uh, doing some, some sampling and uh, oh, nice. selling it. So, yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's perfect. This is like what better place yeah, to it's do a, a podcast. It's a good place to do a podcast because... Uh, as you might know, I'm a contract brewery, so I don't have a pub or anything to... Uh, yet. To, yet. yet. I yeah, I don't have a, a place to uh, to show up to, but I mean, this is where my beer is in the stores, and I thought it was a natural fit to do a podcast here yeah. in the stores that uh, support me. I don't... Re- I can't even think of another place. I don't think we've ever done a podcast, a full-length podcast from a, a store, from memory. It's, I don't think so. So that's very fun. Um, also, just in case people are hearing or watching and seeing folks walking through and fridge noises. So this is an operating uh, beer depender here in Montreal. So like, there's going to be customers coming in, maybe walking past the camera. So if you see that, that's what's up with that. But we're bringing you exactly what it's like Yeah, to be here. So the beer we have in our gorgeous glass right now is a very interesting beer. It's your actual, your latest beer. Yeah, it's my latest. Tell us about this one, brother. Yeah, so uh, this was uh, some kind of uh, experiment I went to, to uh, play with. So it's a blend of three styles, uh, two that are contradictory and two that are like complementary. So I wanted to play like really with a contradiction and something that was more complementary. So uh, first, the contradictory part of it would be like it's a brook nepa. So that's kind of counterintuitive because yeah. uh, nepa, you have the, really a mouthful of... Uh, the texture is really a mouthful, and the brew is, is more like the dryness. Oh, super dry. Super yeah, chill, super yeah. dry, super uh, refreshing. So I really wanted to push it to the extreme and see how much the the oats and the rye and the um, oats, rye and wheat could yeah. uh, still bring a mouthfeel, but without the sugar, like, well, with it being bone dry. So that's what I wanted to experiment with. And I, uh, really, I think it's a success because you uh, you have that mouthfeel, but you still have the dryness. So it's really cool. It's I really like, like how it turned out. And the the Nepa Kvaik part is really complimentary because Kvaik produce a ton of fruity esters. So you right. get a really, 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 really fruity beers. And I chose some fruity hops to go alongside, so to accentuate the fruity side. What are the hops? Uh, uh, there's definitely some Simcoe. I yep. think there's a little bit of uh, Citra. Uh, on top of my head, there would be some Amarillo and Centennial as well. Right. It's totally fruity. Well, yep. cheers. Get in here. I really like this, man. This is fantastic. It's such an interesting beer because it does have that dryness yeah. from the brew. Like, it's definitely hazy and juicy, not like full murky, like you can see right there. But, like, you can tell it's clearly a New England style IPA. Yeah. Mm. And super fruity, but there's like it's like something stops the fruitiness. Like it hits you at first, and then the fruitiness kind of like somewhat abruptly cuts off, yeah. and then gets really dry. And there's like these flavors that I don't necessarily recognize super well, which is probably the Kvik 
yeast. Yeah, uh, me, I get Would like some uh, mango, pineapple. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, and, um, Total tropical fruit salad. Yeah, maybe a, a little bit of um, stone fruit or something that I'm yeah, not like personally melon. sure. Yeah, melon yeah. or stone, stone fruit that uh, I'm not uh, exactly sure, but yeah, that's what. Uh, I like it, man. It's very interesting. And this one, uh, you only released it, I guess. We did the video, I did the quick video for this one, maybe November, late November? Which is uh, no, it would be... Was it um, December? Was December. It's December. Uh, the uh, distribution started uh, right before Christmas, maybe a week before Christmas, uh, but uh, I brought you oh, some before yes. that. Maybe you had it like, uh, like a week mid-December or right. uh, early December or something, yeah. So this one is done really well for you. This is really picked up because it's such an interesting beer. Yeah, so far it seems uh, to uh, get people interested in um, to try my product because uh, as a as a new brewery, I think it's always a challenge. I mean, there's so many uh, good choice on the yeah. on the shelves and uh, in the fridge. So uh, yeah, you you gotta pick the interest of uh, the people. See if you want your beer uh, to get picked up. And um, I feel every time I release a new beer, uh, people who tried the other ones, uh, tried a new one, maybe go back to the older ones as well. So right. it's it's a work in progress, and that's why I really like uh, this way of doing things. I mean. I don't need to fill up the shelves. At the end of the month, I don't have like bills to pay or anything. So I just, step by step, I build up my brand. I try some things, uh, I see if they work, if they don't work, so. Love it, you get that Slowly but surely, yeah. yeah. Um, so let's talk about how you got into beer. Like, and then we'll get into the brewery. Cool, uh, how I got into beer. Yes sir, uh, tell me. Well, I think it first started as soon as I moved out from uh, my mom's uh, house and I rented my apartment. Uh, it was something uh, I knew I, I wanted to do for from a long time. I think probably the idea got uh, got to me because once uh, when I was a kid, uh, one of my friends' uh, father used to brew beer and he has right. that really sick... Um, basement right. like with the beer pumps and everything and it was <laughs> like cave. amazing like, yeah the real man gave <laughs> the pool table and everything Damn. and uh, I think that left an impression on me because it's always something that uh, showed it in my head I mean when I started to drink beer uh, mostly that it came back and like I wanted to do uh, to do it by myself and have right. fun with that so that's yeah when I moved uh, in on uh, myself with my girlfriend I told her we can move together but I gotta brew beer and you gotta be okay with that it's gonna smell beer in the house and uh, I'm gonna brew some so yeah it's been like what Two years? seven seven years six or seven or eight years 2019 now yeah yeah, yeah, when I was about 19 years old, I guess. Okay. Yeah, and um, yeah, um, next thing I knew was I wanted, uh, I, I mean, I always knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and uh, do stuff on my own and not work for somebody all my life. So yeah. when I started brewing beer and realized I could do some good beers, I thought, yeah, I like beer, I like business, like, let's, let's, yeah. try, let, let's try and do something with that. And so that's how I got to, uh, to brew beer. I really got into it and I really liked it and I I brewed a lot and yeah. Okay. And then how did that turn into starting like actually taking it further, creating a brand and beginning the contract? Well the brand uh the brand which is kinda of funny, uh the brand I almost immediately started when I started brewing, I think maybe a year into it or something, I, I started like making a brand name with my brother because I used to brew with him and uh, we, uh, we found a name for uh, a uh, own brewery and it was La Pots Grain. Uh, so it came really early on, the name of the, the brewery, the own brewery, okay. and it, it stick around and um, as things got, uh, got to go on, uh, I really wanted to push the, the project. Funny thing is, uh, I started two years ago, I think, like commercially doing it. Okay. Uh, I was with partner at the time. Turns out it didn't work out, unfortunately. And uh, yeah, thing I really liked about that experience is it got it got me going. I right. mean, like doing it with someone else. It's sometimes it's the, like the kick in the butt you need to really uh, get down to something and really do it. And also having someone to exchange with and like. Share ideas. Share idea and uh, make them move really uh, got me started. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, someone I met like for uh, starting a brewery. So uh, right. I met this person exactly for for that, and we started contract brewing uh, back then. And from the same place you're at now? No, uh, it was at uh, Brisset, La Compagnie Bière Brisset. Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, maybe people would know it for uh, Broken Seven. 
Oh, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I've spoken okay. to them before. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Okay. So, the name as well, by the way, take a sip. I keep talking to you in the middle of taking a sip. I, I, every time I search for it on Instagram, it, I, I think it's like play on words, right? It's a French saying. La pas yeah. du gain or something? La pas du gain, yeah. What with, does that mean? Like, uh, it does not really translate well, but it would be uh, like the lure of the greed, if you will. Like doing something for uh, for your own gains, if you will. or. Right. Uh, like yeah okay so so then the grains like the lure of the grains yeah like instead the, uh, yeah just just okay. uh, I just changed the word because it was almost the same always been mean to ask you that okay yeah. sick so then um, now right now you're contracting out of uh, Brasserie Generale in yeah. Quebec City which is three hours each way it's quite a significant yeah. uh, drive to do that so how did that get started well, mm-hmm. as many things in uh, the beautiful world of... Uh, Maybe I think if we hit this, it's going to... Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sorry. It might make it noise. Like uh, many great things in the, the beer industry, it all started in a beer festival. Okay, of course. <laughs> uh, beers, of course. Yeah, so I went there and uh, they were... Uh, they had like their, their boot over there and uh, I started talking with them. It was uh, right beside my home at the time, so like I went there all the weekend and uh, spoke with the guys and... Uh, at this time, I was looking for another place to uh, produce my beers, so I asked them, and uh, they were willing to do it. So nice. Yeah. And even though it was super far, it made sense. It made sense because it's uh, it's not as easy as uh, some uh, would like to think. Yeah. I mean, contract ring, you have to find someone that will brew your beers to your standards. Yes. Uh, that will have uh, some capacity production for you. Okay. I mean, uh, if they don't have it. If, if they can produce your beers, then you don't have anything to sell. Yeah. So, and finding it at a fair price is also uh, one of the main concerns you have to deal with. Yeah, I hear some stories. Of, I've read some stuff recently that uh, I forgot who it was, and they were saying that the brewery that they're that's doing it for them was like, like damn near doubling the price of per liter. I can't remember it was somewhere in the states, I think, and it was essentially going to put them out of business, like because the contract. You mean uh, a small brewery or a big one? So, like the the big brewery that's contracted. That's Paps, brewing it. isn't it? That's Paps. Thank you. And they were, and that's a huge thing. Yeah. Because Paps don't even have their own stuff, which is also kind of weird. I guess it's just a brand. That, yeah, like, I really never knew that until the, that article yeah. came up. Yeah, I really thought it was like. Uh, like they had their own. It was its yeah. actual brewery. Like a Rickards is just a brand. They don't have a brewery. It's brewed out of whatever Molson or Labatt or whoever owns it. Yeah, but it, I think it's owned by Molson. It's owned by Molson, but they don't have a Ricketts brewery. Yeah, it's just, no, a, yeah. just like, I guess, I think maybe Blue Moon or Shock Top would come under that. They're yeah. a brand that is owned by a macro brewery and that's just brewed out of somewhere. Now, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but for someone like Paps, I had really thought they would have had their own facility. And for them to be that large and then held, like, at gunpoint by the big brewery yeah. to be like, well, you're going to pay... I, do you know what? Now, I think it was, like, tr- triple, maybe. It was something like... Exorbitant. Yeah, crazy numbers. To the yeah. point where it would like, I think triple now, I'm picturing the article. Like, that's crazy. So, I mean, that is a big concern for contract brewers. You're trying to build a brand. You're trying to make a consistent product that is in line with what you, the small batch that you brew, and you're like, this is what the beer is supposed to be. you got to scale it up. you got to trust them to do it. And then you got to trust them to not all of a sudden be like, you know what, we're tripling the price. It's yeah. stressful. Well, it's stressful, but I mean... But I guess not that bad. It's not that bad. But gotta, I, at, the end of, at the end of the month, if uh, if I my, my if my beer don't sell, I don't get wrecked, and they uh, they won't come over and take over my house. I mean, I don't have like super huge. Uh, I don't have any. Uh, I don't owe any money to uh, nobody. I mean, right, right. So yeah, That's but a good yeah, position. it's mm-hmm. always uh, hard to project yourself and say, yeah, well, yeah, next year I'm gonna do that many liters and everything because if the brewery that brews your beer start experiencing some growth maybe they won't have as much uh, time or um, to spend like on your space for it. and space for it yeah do you so. have a plan B if that happens well if it would ever to be to happen I guess I would uh, I really like working with these guys so I guess I would try to find a way to optimize uh, thing over there maybe right. buying some new equipment or anything like to really and get get continue doing it well with them because I really uh, really like doing it over there uh, but if uh, if if I don't have any other choices uh, I guess I would uh, try and find some other place to brew yeah. right I mean this is, I don't know why it just came into my head now like a, a cooperative like my brasserie where you 
do purchase your own equipment and then it's sort of like your stuff that's in that brewery? Or is yeah. that too not doesn't suit what you need? It, it might have been possible, but um, I, I think they're starting to change that. But once, uh, once I... Uh, first time I approached them would be like uh, start of 2018 okay. um, they wouldn't do it because I uh, I didn't own a pub or something so their point was we, uh, we, we, would, to... we would do it for someone who owns a pub or uh, as a bar or anything uh, but since I was only uh, like a how would you say that a contract brewery yeah, yeah, yeah since yeah. I was only a contract brewery and I didn't have a place uh, they wouldn't do it back then uh, I think I, I spoke with some people and it told me it might have changed since, since then. But yeah, that's one of the reasons I, uh, I didn't go to uh, my boss for now. Yeah. But if they do change, that could be an option. That type of situation, not necessarily them, but that situation. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there, there's like plenty. Of, there are some options. You have, uh, you have to look, at, look for the, uh, these options. And I mean, once you're already in it, I think it's easier to find some place to brew your beers. Right. Because once I once I when so I first things, did it, yeah, it was like, odd. it was odd because they don't know if your beer will sell. They don't know you. Mm. They don't know anything. And then uh, they they are gonna going to brew your beer. Is it just a skew that's gonna sit on a shelf and everything? Right. So once you get to start doing it, I guess it's easier. It opens some doors uh, once you've already done it and you have established yourself. I mean, I don't feel like I'm really established right now. I, right. I, I'm just fooling around, having fun and. Trying okay. to make some great beer, but yeah. How long have you had products on the shelf? About two years. Would be about ten or twelve releases max. Okay. So I mean, even the type of, type of stuff you've been making right now, we're drinking the Brukovic New England IPA. Um, this one here, we're going to crack as soon as the uh, like a watermelon whip beer. Yeah. And then this one is it's a hoppy whip beer. Oh, a hoppy whip beer. Okay. And what other type of um, beers have you done? I so far have a uh, Belgian blonde. Okay. I have a saison IPA, which which should uh, should be coming back soon ish. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. I have a uh, well, the um, the base beer of these two, like mm-hmm. the two wit beer. There are uh, there's the Chèque en Blanc. Yeah. Which is the basic beer for. Uh, like the, the, yeah. these are both uh, Chèque en Blanc. With. But once watermelon hoppy, one and what's his gotcha. once is way more hoppy. Okay. Uh, I use a lot of Belgian yeast. I love American hops and I love English malt. So it's bit of a mix. Bit of a mix of uh, everything I can find and uh, everything I like. I bring it together and yeah. Nice. Uh, I don't fit myself into one particular category. I right. I really like to fool around with stuff as you have seen. Yeah. Right. This is. Uh, I don't know. We've like do you. We've been joking. Well, sort of joking, but then kind of since something got serious about we have the, the lactose thing uh, that we talk about very very often on Facebook it's kind of calmed down a bit now though yeah like, people, are less, uh, people are less less salty it. about <laughs> yeah. it yeah, people are getting really serious about it we're always joking and shit yeah. damn but, uh, people people took it way too serious um, and we were going to do like a joke we we're trying to start a page Facebook page so you could get more likes I was like why don't we just do a lactose collab you're like alright and you brewed essentially a version of this beer we're drinking now is that right with lactose or yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a test batch because I I really wanted to see because yes, my approach sometimes when I try to create a beer I always try to like make it a challenge for me or some kind of experiment I want to have going on. So right. what I tried uh, was to make a uh, a brute uh, milkshake, uh, basically a brute milkshake uh, version of that beer, right. and uh, it went quite well because uh, I uh, I successfully dried out the beer so much that even after the lactose was added, I finished I think at like point three or point four plateaus. It's pretty so, low. Yeah, pretty low. So right. uh, what like what did the lactose do? Because essentially it was the same sort of recipe, essentially, but with the lactose. So it's made it creamier or something? It's really weird because it was still really, really dry. But the only sugar left was, was like the, the lactose sugar. Right. Uh, I couldn't really tell you what exactly it did because uh, I'm into lactose, so I don't pick like lactose beer out of the shelf. You actually that, are, right? I wasn't uh, I'm a- joking. No, I'm actually lactose intolerant. So if <laughs> if I drink a lactose beer, I'm gonna have like have stomach ache and yeah, yeah. Well, sorry, to, sorry to uh, <laughs> make you do that, and then hopefully no didn't problem. make you upset. Make no, no, upset. no, no, it's cool. Okay, are we? Are you genuinely, seriously considering? doing that beer for real 
Well, I mean, if I can get it to, um, if I if I can make a recipe I'm proud of, of course I'll do it. Because because there's no convention about how you should brew beer or no. anything. I mean, if they are, fuck mm. them. Yeah, pretty much. Speaking of fuck them, I, people really started getting mad about this beer. The one yeah, that it's really now. Funny. Like you, you were sort of aware of that. I feel like you're a shit stirrer online, which is funny. Like as in, like you purposely provoke people, and I find that hilarious. Yeah, but I, I, that that was, uh, th- I guess, that was the purpose of the beer. Like, the people were like, how can you, how can this even be a thing? Like, yeah, but then when they get down to it, what's their experience? What, what have I managed to do with that? And like. I th- to me it was a success and I like to provoke provoke a little bit people because then if you think uh, that everything is written in stones and that can be changed then uh, you're yeah I'm not sure how to say it in English but you're you're staying still you're gonna have to advance it you're not yeah. trying things and even if some people don't like it then, uh, at least I, I will have tried it and I think I've succeeded to uh, to bring something or experience something make something out of it so yeah it's something new something different yeah. generate some talk I was talking with um, with a few of the guys like Noah Noah from Beerism and a few of the boys we talked to about this the other day and it was something that like someone was he sent me an article that his friend wrote about like predictions and he was complaining about lactose and that I'm like fuck man like stop get over it like they're just like oh I wish breweries would stop like how far can it go until beer is not beer anymore and I'm like shut up just stop it stop this like it makes me really angry that people um, take it way too seriously. Like, you know what? It's it's like I always compare it to hip hop. I'm not sure if you're into hip hop and understand how it changed, but like a little bit. It's like in the '90s it sounded a certain way, in the early 2000s it kind of changed, but not that much. In the last five to seven years or so, it really changed. And I'm been into it for a long time since the early '90s. So for me, I was like, what is this? Who are these young rappers that are like mumbling and like? using auto-tune and these weird beats I'm like this is trash like, this is not hip hop but I was getting mad about it and I was always writing about it online like I was those angry beer people but about rap music and then one day I was like you know what fuck it like get over it it's yeah. okay what I listened to when I was a kid the people who grew up listening to hip hop in the 80s probably thought it was garbage too and my parents probably didn't understand it so I didn't really like understand what like what I felt like sorry I did understand what these people are going through because I was that guy but my life got better as soon as I stopped complaining and I feel like with the beer people it's not, it seems like you know what if you just want, want beer that tastes like beer bro look look around how many yeah. are there and yeah. how many lactose beers are there probably four so is it really that much of a problem like I think they blow it out of proportion so much people complain so much about beer for some reason like, about anything like people, kind of uh, people are like just so stuck up with like their their way of thinking and their way of doing things. Yeah. I mean, you should embrace change. You should not fight it. It's it's coming, whether or not you like it. I mean, things are going to evolve. They're going to change, yep. and even yourself, you're going to change. So yeah. Uh, where can everybody find you online? I uh, pretty much Facebook, Instagram at Le Pat du Grand. Yeah, uh, there's not an L on uh, Instagram. There's no L. It's just Lapa du Grain, and on Facebook it's Lapa du Grain Beer Artisanal Inc. Okay, but you probably don't doesn't have to type. All we're gonna there. we're gonna put it up on the screen, so it's easier for you, brother. Pleasure. Thank you for doing pleasure. this. This is great. Uh, shouts again to Olivier for having us here today. Hi, Ali. Olivier. Who come and say we're gonna do Olivier. a podcast with him? Because I think we have done one with a uh, a, a depreneur. Hi, Who come here? Come say good day. Hey, it's Olivier. Thank you for having Hi. us today, brother. Pleasure. Where can people find uh, Experience Beer online and uh, in uh, real life? Yeah, in real life on Amherst, Amherst uh, in Montreal, yeah. uh, 1751. Amherst, uh, 1751. This is uh, Maisonneuve. Uh, um, no, it's not Amherst. It's not no, what's well, the, the trans- trans- uh, It's Robin. Robin. Okay. Yeah, but it's in between Maisonneuve and Ontario. Perfect. And uh, we're on Facebook, and we try to be on Instagram. We try. <laughs> it's important. So come check them out. They got like a ton of beer here. It's uh, fantastic. Everything you're going to want. Everything. Thank you for having us, brother. Appreciate that. Pleasure. Thank you so much. Guys, if you enjoyed the episode, mate, smash the thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell so you know when the new new drops. Follow us on social media at BOS Podcast. And check out the long form audio so you can hear very attractive bearded gentlemen like Uncle Fabrice here, who's hashtag Team Lactose. Uh, team talk about no rac- Lactose. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, fair enough. <laughs> Talk about the um, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all that. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. See you in the next episode. Cheers.